After cooking, where should fat, grease, and oil be placed? Some might think down the drain. However, this may cause major sewer backups. Nicole Condon from the District of Columbia Water and Sewer Authority is here to tell us a better way to dispense of these unwanted items. I love when you come in and tell us about what to do with our cooking grease and our oils and stuff because we think, oh, we'll just throw it down the drain and it'll be fine and it'll go somewhere. But really, what happens? Tell us. Well, so I'm here to talk about fats, oils, and grease, or FOG for short, okay. which are used to cook and prepare food. And common culprits include butter, cooking and frying oils, grease that's left over from cooking bacon or other meat, and even salad dressings and oil-based marinades are you oily know, things. Absolutely. They wow. fall into that category. So we all think, like, just put it down the drain and it'll be fine. But, you know, once it leaves our house, it may not actually leave our house. What, what, what do you see happening? That's right. So I'm here on behalf of D.C. Water, Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments, and all of the D.C. Metro uh, area water utilities to tell you about the negative impact that fats, oils, and grease can have on our customers as well as our public uh, sewer systems. Okay. So the problem here is that what happens is it gets stuck on the inside of our pipes, and that can cause major problems for household plumbing as well as our municipal sewer lines. Um, once the fats, oils, and grease cool, and it sticks to the inside of the pipe, it builds up and it can cause sewer backups. Now these sewer backups can occur in people's homes. So we're talking gross water coming out of your sink, out of your toilet, filling your basement, and yeah. of course in our city streets as well. Um, and this of course is a costly, messy problem, not only for the water utilities, but for our customers. Uh, residents may have to hire a plumber and pay for damage from this disgusting water in their, you know, on their property. Um, and our, our regional water utilities are already investing hundreds of man hours to take care of these kinds of repairs and sewer cleanups. So what should we do? If we've got, we cooked bacon this morning, now we've got this grease left over, what, what do we do with it? So the number one thing is don't put it down the drain. <laughs> we recommend that you put it in a heat proof container, something like an aluminum can. Okay. Uh, you want to cool it, so a lot of people put it in the freezer or in the fridge. Um, and then once it cools and it solidifies, you can just throw it away in the garbage. Okay. Um, another good practice, when you've been cooking and you have oil or grease residue in a pan, mm -hmm. you want to wipe it out with a paper towel and then you can just throw that paper towel in the trash before you go ahead and wash the pan. Um, one other thing is you can use a, a sink strainer so that you can keep any kind of food scraps or debris from going in your drain. Now you brought some paper towels which must mean that paper towels are a, cul a culprit in other parts of the house also. Well that's right so we also wanted to talk about some of the other things that we're trying to keep out of our, our sewer lines um, and these kind of things are really th things that I think people would probably flush down the toilet without mm -hmm. thinking twice um, and the problem there of course is that these items um, they don't break down the way that toilet paper does. Um, so rule of thumb is that the only thing that should be entering our sewer system is toilet paper and human waste and that's it. So even these things that may look like toilet paper, paper towels, tissue, I honestly can say that I was guilty of occasionally flushing a Kleenex down the toilet. But it's, they don't break down the same way and our sewer systems just aren't made to handle these items. And again we think, okay, especially these wipes that are, you know, they're supposed to be disposable wipes that you can just toss in into in, into your toilet and flush away but they don't actually go away. Where do they go? They don't. They end up getting stuck in our pipes and to make matters worse, they actually combine with the fats, oils, and grease oh my God. to create these huge problems. I don't know if you remember hearing last August about the London sewer system fatberg. This was a bus sized glob of fats, oils, and grease and baby wipes that clogged <laughs> the London sewer system for days. Um, and recently, last October, we had about a three and a half foot ball of grease um, in one of our sewer lines near Constitution Avenue. So this is happening. It's causing major problems. These things just don't belong in our sewer system. I am horrified yet <laughs> amused by this. I feel like if it was, you know, maybe a little radiation got in there, it would just take over the city. So. Right. It would start moving right. and attacking people. <laughs> so we don't want that at all. So no. take care of your fog, your fats, oils, and greases. Don't throw them down the sink. Throw them away. Um, and then these paper products, even tissues. I feel like tissues are exactly the same thing as toilet paper. I know, and the truth is, they just, the fibers don't break down the same way. Okay, so 
you've heard of some uh, some scientific uh, studies where they actually I guess put them into a centrifuge and see what happens, what it would be like in the toilet. Tell us what that seems to be like. Yeah, the, the Spokane Water Utility actually has a great YouTube video out there. Um, they've done a little experiment in their lab where they kind of simulate a toilet mm -hmm. um, where you have the water spinning and the blade and they put all of these different items and then they leave them for 10, 15 minutes to an hour and you can see that the only thing that breaks down and dissolves is toilet paper. Wow. Where, you know, the dental floss is getting all wrapped around the blade and you know the tissue paper is just still in there just spinning around you know so it's just not breaking down. I hadn't thought about that because I, I send uh, dental floss down the toilet and oh I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people who's going to have the uh, the attack of the sewer system here soon. Right. So if the sewer system can't hold on to these things, and especially when it's cold outside, I guess you know if you're you're sending fats, oils, and greases down exactly. your sewer system, and then it's cold outside. Once it gets sort of outside your property line, it's it's bad news. Once it starts to freeze and, and get solidified. And it's not only outside your property line. I know in my neighborhood, I saw a ton of rotor rooter trucks around the holidays. Yeah. These are backups that occur in people's homes and cost them a lot of of money so um, it's it's just as much a problem for customers and residents as it is for the water utilities where can people find out more information maybe see some of those ugly videos uh, we have a website through the Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments and I think we're going to flash that on the screen Excellent. Um, but you can go to their website and uh, take a look at some more information thank you so much Nicole okay so no more dental floss down <laughs> the toilet for my household. That's Good right. to know. Thanks again for joining <laughs> Thank us. Thank you. More Let's Talk Lives coming up. Stick with us right here.